So playing in church was the main thing, um, you know, but still, uh, <laughs> it was like, by them times, you're like chic. It was like earth in a fire. It was like the Commodores, you know, and to be honest, apart from the songs that I heard sung in church, I did not hear a lot of what we would know now as gospel music. I heard, I heard it was, you know, so I'd go home and I remember I'd buy a few of these chic albums and stuff as well, knowing that if my dad ever caught me, I'd, I'd, I'd know about it, basically. <laughs> I'm always listening to the radio, listening to Sheik and Earth, Wind and Fire and Bob Marley and, and uh, I know you might laugh, there was bands called Sweet, Mud, um, <laughs> Shawadi Wadi, Blondie. I was influenced by all these bands, um, starting to listen to Eric Clapton, um, a lot of white orientated music. We could listen to the radio, we could watch Top of the Pops. Oh gosh, every religious, Thursday, religious. With dad involved as well. Mm. Not, definitely not so much mum. I don't think she even knew it was, it was on. No, we just, <laughs> that was our thing. <laughs> yeah, that was our thing together. And my dad was always singing because he could, oh, ooh, he had a fantastic voice. And so he'd be singing like Shy Lights and Stylistics. Hey! And you could for. do that up in that range. Yeah. So that's where the vocal skills came from, I think, for us. Like, Sorry, um... Mum. <laughs> <laughs> the struggle for me was, in church, you played church music. So it was strictly gospel music. All the time I was listening to all the soul stuff that was on the radio. Um, you know, all the Philly sound, all of the... Um, the um, soul stuff that was coming on Earth, Wind and Fire. I, I was a massive fan of Earth, Wind and Fire. I just loved that. Al Mackay's guitar, all of that stuff. And I was listening to it, practicing it, and found no place for it in church until I started to get younger musicians in and started to say, let's try some of this on the choruses. And it was like, oh, okay. So you can transfer some of that stuff. What I didn't know was that that was church music that soul guys were playing. Um, and that, that most of the guys that you hear doing soul music, I didn't even understand at the time that they were from church. They were all church guys. So it wasn't the world influencing the church. It was, has always been the church influencing the world. That's what we need to understand. And our convention season for our church started about January, it went through to April. Mm. And what used to happen, you had popular songs or popular choruses that were played in each district. So depending on when your district convention was, by the time these songs had got to your district convention, most people knew them and they were just ordinary. So by that time I began to play away from a local church and in conventions. I think I was playing in national conventions when I was about 14. Mm -hmm. National conventions. You'd have been 17. Yeah, yeah 17. definitely about 14. And um, I remember having a discussion with, um, I think it was me, Trevor and, and Glenn at the time, because um, our convention was a bit late that year. And they were saying, we've been hearing these choruses through the different conventions. So we need to try and do something different because it, like most musicians, when you're bored of the song, you're bored of it and you just, you don't have no feeling to it. So I remember hearing some tunes. I can't remember what they were. And something said, take the, take the rift from this and apply it to this chorus. And he just flipped it on the head. My brothers, because they were both musicians, they listened to everything. Um, particularly like at that time, there was Chic and other Jackson, bands Queen. like that, Michael Jackson, they listened to a <laughs> lot of that. And actually, you could hear those influences Listen, in I'm church. Just, I was hearing that, hearing Billie Jean going yeah. through one of the songs. I remember, <laughs> I remember one Sunday where oh, um, some of the elders were upset because they could hear Billie Jean, <laughs> the bass line of Billie Jean in church. And you kind of wondered yourself, how do you know that's, that's Billie Jean? Somebody borrowed, um, it was the best of Andre Crouch. And uh, they was playing it on the on the gramophone, the record player. And I was um, I was I was kind of half asleep, but I could I could hear the music and I heard "Take Me Back" 
for the first time. And I can tell you from now that I was half asleep and nobody could see that I was crying my eyes out when I heard that song. When I heard it, we, I used to hear the church sing it. We'd go to our convocation and, and, and come back with some new songs. And one time that was one of the songs. And Warsaw, <laughs> our church always had the, it's not a knack, it's not the knack, but they always sang the song slightly wrong. And you know, with the Jamaican thing, it, was, it, was, it wasn't take me back, it was takes me back. Takes me back, you know, takes me back. The, and it, it, it's poor. And I heard this song perform properly rec in its recording uh, form. And it moved me. It really did. Divine was formed in 1986. Ooh, whoa. We have to talk about what led to that. Yes. 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 <laughs> Prior to that, we were singing as a family in Dalton Kerr's choir which was called Choir Light, and um, we were all singing together in the choir. And um, October of that year, Trevor Minto from New Testament, um, Hansworth, he, they were, Hansworth were having a concert. Was it Hansworth? No, sorry, it was Highgate. Highgate. Highgate were having a concert. And Trevor asked me to do some songs at the concert, and I was only 16, and I said, no way. And um, he says, just think about it. And I said, can I ask my sister to sing with me, uh, Yvonne? And he said, yes, of course. And I spoke to Yvonne and she says, let's ask Melanie and Marlene if they'll sing with us. Because we were all quite young. I was only 16, Yvonne was 20 and the twins were only 15. So um, she said, yeah, let's... And I said, well, who are we going to ask to play? I said, we'll ask Duke and Paul and Jason because they were already playing for, for, quite for the choir. Yeah. So we said, well, just ask the guys to play for us. And um, it was quite funny. We sang um, at the concert. My, 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 my. No. No, it wasn't What Is This. No, it was What Is This. It was What Is This. What Is This. And the reaction of the crowd kind of shocked us. We were like, what's all the fuss about? And I was completely shocked at how the congregation responded. And um, we were so excited as well. We didn't even finish the song. No, we, we didn't. Were, we kind of just, we like, just right. put the mic down and come down. <laughs> <laughs> it was so innocent. Yeah, it was like, okay, okay, okay. Like that. So we just kind of put the mic down and come down. Uh, I ended up doing some work with um, Divine. Did a lot of recording with Divine on a few of their albums. Um, Duke Kerr, who's an amazing songwriter, wrote It Is To You. Um, it is to you I give the glory. And um, I was the one who did the lead vocal on that, on the, the recording. And then um, what was amazing was um, Donnie McClurklin got hold of the song and literally claimed that he wrote it. He didn't. He claimed that he wrote it. And uh, then he recorded it along with another American artist that recorded it. Thankfully, Duke got the uh, credit that it was due. But what I found was a real, uh, really flattering was that Donnie, Donnie McClurklin was basically doing the licks that I do on the original recording. I thought, oh, they say that imitation is the, is the highest form of flattery. So I'll take that, <laughs> I'll take that. I was able to join forces with a lot of some fantastic singers, Gloria Brown, my cousin, and she was foremost amongst them as a singing partner and as somebody whose singing I absolutely admired. We went to the same church, Peel Street. Um, she had a reputation, by, by the way, coming from the same place I came from in Jamaica, um, in, in Top Mountain, Paul Mountain. She there used to sing and was a bit of a sensation out there. I hadn't known that until I came to England. So she and I teamed up. She had a much better voice. Um, and then after a while, we had we 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 joined we we created groups. There were also choirs being created, and there was an explosion of of singing and music. Where I learned to sing, the person that really sort of like fed in, who really mentored me was Gloria, Gloria. Brown. Absolutely. The no. first time she heard me sing, you can't sing. I was <laughs> gutted, absolutely gutted. But she saw potential yeah. in me. She didn't ramp. No, she didn't ramp. And she was a great, she was a great teacher. Oh. She was just, she was just absolutely 
she's the reason why I can sing the way that I can sing. Mm, um, and it's because powerful. of her mm. and her powerful. faith in me. I used to think I could sing, but she taught me mm. how to sing, how to belt it out. It's not mm. like now with auto tuning. <laughs> mm. mm. I had to. We had to sing because in yeah. them days Absolutely. you had one mic between a hundred people. Absolutely. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and electric guitars. Yeah, yeah and a exactly. Drum. So yeah. you had to be able to project your voice. You had your to voice. project your voice, Absolutely. and you had to sing. And I'm <laughs> glad for those days. Mm. I am really glad that they taught me how to sing. So she taught me how to sing. Gloria's singing has enthralled so many um, congregations and, and, and settings in conventions, in those town hall and Digbeth Hall conventions uh, that, that we had. Um, she told me once that when she was younger and, and, and having come to England, that uh, one of the major record labels heard about her, which is quite believable because she had a remarkable voice, and came to her, sought her out, tracked her down. They obviously must have listened to her somewhere and um, tried to sign her. And, but such was the cultural uh, stranglehold, if you like, that um, church and our expression and understanding of faith had on her at that time that those around her refused to allow her to, to sign uh, and, and to become a professional singer. Mm -hmm.